Hey GED students, I was scrolling through a Facebook group that I'm a part of, GED We Study and Help Each Other, and um, I saw this question posted by a student, Kenzie. Now, it does happen to be one of my questions. It's from the crash course, uh, Perfect Squares in Their Roots practice, and it is from the advanced level practice. And I wanted to work it out because the GED loves undefined expression problems. So let's go ahead and read it. It says, which values of the variable would make the expression the square root of one half X plus two undefined in the set of real numbers? Now, a really common mistake that students make here is they just don't even read the words. You, sometimes you guys just like treat math like the words aren't important. The words are super important here. Uh, because I'm not asking you to solve this sucker. It's not even something I could solve. It's not an equation. It's just an expression. Okay, there's what I mean by that is there's no like equal sign and something over here. Okay, so I can't solve. I can't figure out what x should be. But that's okay. That's not what they're asking me to do anyway. They're asking me to find what x couldn't be. We say that again. They're asking me to find what x couldn't be. When they ask for what makes the expression undefined, an expression is undefined if we have no answers. And what do they mean by in the set of real numbers? Like there's no real answer. Um, turns out later in math, you'll learn what are called imaginary numbers. Yes, we made up imaginary numbers when we ran out of real numbers. But um, they're saying there's no real answer for this. Okay. So that being said, this is what you need to know. What you need to know when you're looking at undefined expressions is you need to realize something about square roots. And that is, you cannot take the square root of a negative number. Let's just write that down. We need that in the notes. You cannot take the square root of a negative number. My tablet is acting all weird. Cannot take the square root of a negative number. And that's because, remember, square root is the opposite of squaring, and if you were to square a negative number, you'd get a positive. And if you square a positive number, you still get a positive. There's nothing we can do to square um, a number and get a negative answer. So because of that, you know, we can't take the square root of a negative number. They just uh, simply don't exist. They're what we call undefined. So all you have to do is take a look at this expression that's inside the square root. If you can make this be negative, then the expression is undefined. So um, it, you go on to college and they'll call that um, the, what do they call that? I can't even remember. But there's a name for the inside of the radical, but we don't need to know it for the GED. So <laughs> y'all, I should not make videos before I've had all my coffee. But if the insides there is negative, then this expression is undefined. So what we're gonna do there could be more than one thing that makes this negative. And there's lots of ways to do this problem, but I think what I'll do is I'll just work backwards. And I'll test each of these answers and see if it makes it negative. Because if it makes it negative, then this doesn't have an answer and is undefined. Let me show you what I mean. So let's erase this so we have room to work. And let's get started. Let's just try each of these values of x and see what happens, okay? So if I had the square root of 1 half x plus 2 and I plugged in negative 1 for the x, let's see what would happen. Now I'm guessing that what threw can see, like what would throw most students, is having to do fractions by hand. Like I said, if we see this problem on the GED, um, it would be in the non-calculator section. And so how mean would it be if there was this fraction in here? But remember that when you are multiplying, it's the same as taking half of something, like half times is half of. So what would half of negative one be? Well, it would just be negative one half. When you multiply by one, it doesn't change the number, but since it's a negative one, it will change that sign. And we're gonna add that with two. Now, a lot of students are like, oh my gosh, it's still scary with the fractions, but let's think about this. We, I'm going to start with the positive 2 because that's easier to picture. So here I am, I have two things. 
And then negative one half, well, that means like I owe you half of something. I've got to give you half of what I have. So I'll do that. I'll give you half. And what do I have left? Well, I have one and a half. I didn't have to know much about fractions to see that I have one and a half things left. Now you say, is that a positive one and a half or a negative? Well, I have that after I gave you the negative that I owed you. Negative numbers are like money you owe or something you owe. And so that's a positive one, positive one and a half. That would not make this sucker undefined. I'm good to go. Uh, let's try the next value. Let's try what happens if we plug in negative three. Okay, so I have the expression 1 half x plus 2, and I want to see if I plug in 3, oh, it's not 3. I'm like, why am I so confused? Negative 3, sorry you guys. I want to see if I plug in negative 3, if I can get a real answer out. So again, a square root of a positive answer is real, but if it's a square root of a negative answer, oh, undefined. All right, so let's take a look. One half of negative three. Now you might be saying, Kate, I don't know what ha one half of negative three is, but let's think about it. You have $3 and you want half. Remember, we can translate that as half. So, you know, I'd get a dollar, you'd get a dollar if we were splitting it in half, then I'd get 50 cents and you'd get 50 cents, okay? So a half of negative three is one and a half or 1.5. We'd each get a dollar and then half of a dollar, 50 cents. Okay, so that's negative 1.5 or negative one and a half, same difference. And I'm gonna add that to two. You know what, I think I will write it as one and a half since we were struggling so much with fractions. Okay, so now let's take a look at this. Again, I owe you one and a half things, but that's what I mean when I say negative. I owe you one and a half things, but I have, see that positive number, two of them. So let's take a look. I've got two things, one, two, but this time I owe you one and a half. So I'll give you this one, one, and I'll give you half of this one, gone. And so all I'll have left is a half, but that is something I have. Okay, so this is a positive one half. So this is a real answer. You can take the square root of a positive number. So this is not making the expression undefined. All right, let's erase this so we can try the other two. Now these are gonna get a little trickier to picture because negative numbers are hard to picture, but we're gonna try our best, okay? So once again, we're testing out the expression one half x plus two, and we're testing what happens if we put in these values of x. Okay, so let's put in negative five. So one half of negative five plus two. Okay, so once again, I want you to imagine, let's just ignore the negative sign for now. It'll make our lives easier. That you've got $5, or five anything, really five apples, five pies, I don't care, and I want half of them. So, you know, one for me, one for you. One for me, one for you. Oh, and now we only have one left, so we better split it in half. Half for me, half for you. Okay, all right, so what's one half of five? One half of five is one, two, and a half. Okay, we just split it in half, but this wasn't one half of regular old five, it was one half of negative five. And so I end up with negative two and a half. And that's adding with two. Okay, now, uh, I'm, now I'm looking at negatives and positives uh, with fractions again, a little tricky to combine. But again, let's think about this. I owe you two and a half things. Okay, here's the two and a half things that I owe you. I'm supposed to pay you two and a half things. Now, I only have, positive numbers is like money you have, I only have two things, so I'll pay you one of those things I owe you, two of those things you owe you, but guess what? I'm still going to have debt. I'm still going to have, owe you a half of a thing. And so this is the square root of negative. I still owe it to you, one half, okay? Whenever you have more debt than what you have, you're going to end up still in debt, Okay, and so I can see that this expression is trying to get me to take the square root of a negative number. And we said we are not allowed to take the square root of a negative number in the real numbers. There's no real answer to this. Okay, now again, later, if you go into college, you'll learn a new set of numbers called imaginary numbers and you'll be able to do imaginary math. But for now, we're talking real numbers, doesn't work. So this sucker is undefined.
Okay, and you'd know that too. I mean, if you don't believe me, pick up your calculator and try typing in the square root of negative one half. Your calculator will give you an error because it's saying, oh, I can't do that math. Okay, so last one, let's just test. Notice that the directions here said which values of the variable. That means there could be more than one right answer. Okay, so let's go ahead and check out negative seven. So one half of negative seven, and for those of you who are good pat pattern spotters, you might already realize, hey, this is probably gonna come out negative two. <laughs> um, but uh, let's go ahead and show it for the rest of us who aren't. So once again, one half of negative seven, even if you don't know how to multiply with fractions, all the things we can use a visual representation. So I have seven things. And I'm just ignoring the negative sign for now. And I want half of them. So one for you, one for me, one for you, one for me, one for you, one for me. And we have one left, we're gonna have to half it, half for you, half for me. So what's half of seven? It's one, two, three and a half. Three and a half, but that wasn't positive seven, that was negative seven, so I get negative three and a half. And I wanna add that to two. And I don't really think that I need to draw the picture for you to see here that I have more debt, more money I owe you, than I have money in my possession, okay? So again, let's take a look at that. If I owe you three and a half things, one, two, three and a half things, these are what's owed to you, and I only have two dollars or two things, I'll pay off one, two of those things, and I'm still going to owe you one and a half. I'm still going to owe you, so it's negative one and a half things. And I didn't need to have memorized any of my fraction computations, and that's very common on the GED. The fractions they give you can be easily visualized, all right? And take a look at this. Once again, this expression is now asking me to take the square root of a negative number, but we said we can't take the square root of a negative number. That would be undefined. There'd be no definition for that, no number answer. And so D also makes this expression undefined. So once again, when we're looking for undefined values, we're actually looking for what X couldn't be, not what X has to be, all right? If you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.